What's going on guys? Bob Busker here at Think Computers and I'm gonna be showing you the UEFI BIOS here on a Gigabyte's Z170X Gaming G1 motherboard. Now this BIOS will be pretty much the same throughout Gigabyte's entire Z170 line. Um, they use pretty much the same BIOS, maybe different skins for different types of motherboards, but all the options and everything and all the menus should all be the same. The biggest change that we see from X99 and Z97 is that Gigabyte has gone away with their different BIOS modes or different um, BIOS, I would, I guess you would say different BIOSes. Um, before, we had three different three different ones to choose from. We have the one that you see here, which is their just advanced BIOS, and then we had the Tweak HD, and then we had the short, sort of like shortcut uh, easy mode we don't have any of that. We just have what you have here, which is the advanced mode. Um, a lot of people just like the advanced mode. And, um, you know, for anybody who's going in to change a lot of settings, you're going to want the advanced mode anyways. Um, I still would have liked to have seen that shortcut mode, uh, maybe to set, set your XMP profile and set your boot priority and all that kind of stuff. I would like to see that, but uh, just one BIOS here. So I'm going to go through all of it. The first tab we have is our MIT. And um, this is where you're gonna set everything up for overclocking and all that kind of stuff. Um, so your MIT current status, that just shows you what speed your CPU is running at, your memory is running at, um, your memory timings and all of that stuff um, for everything. So that's like current status of all your stuff running. So if you wanna go back and check it, you can go ahead and do that. Advanced frequency settings, of course, this is where you're gonna set up everything for your overclock or for your CPU. Um, you can set everything here. And if we go down, we can actually set our advanced CPU core settings. All that stuff you can set, um, different power limits, everything in here for the CPU, you can go ahead and do. Advanced memory settings, um, you can set up your, you know, your memory uh, speeds and your timings and everything like that. Um, and you can set up your sub timings as well. You can do all this stuff in here. Um, so if you want to set your timings manually, you can go ahead and do that. We'll go out of there. Advanced voltage settings. And this is where you're going to set all of the voltage controls, all of the power controls for the motherboard. So there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, of course, this is for all of your load line calibration and all that kind of stuff. But what's great is you can change all of this, uh, which is awesome. CPU core, CPU core voltages, um, all of that, everything for your CPU, chipset voltages, DRAM voltages, and your VR controls. Everything is in here. A lot of stuff that you can go in and change. PC health status, this is gonna show in real time all of your voltages, all of your fan speeds, and all of your temperatures. Um, so you can kind of go down through here and see everything so you're not sure what's running or how everything's going. You can go ahead and see it all. Um, and you can set up your fail warning. So if, like, if a fan doesn't turn on or your CPU fan, that's the most important one, doesn't turn on, you can go in here and you can change it um, so there's a warning when that fan isn't active or you have temperature warnings and all that kind of stuff you can set up in here. Um, really cool stuff. Pretty sure that's all that's in here. Um, you can set up your speed controls for each one of the fans as well. Um, so you can set it to a certain curve or however you want to do it um, for every one of the headers that's on the motherboard. So there's a total of five. So you have all five system fans that you can go ahead and set like that. So that is it for the MIT. Oh, there's miscellaneous. Um, you can set your 3D1 Mark 3D Marco one enhancement and your max link speed, you can set that. Um, but that's it for the MIT. So we'll go over to system information. And this basically just tells you all of the information on your motherboard and your BIOS. Um, so if you're not sure which version of the BIOS you're running, you can go in here and go ahead and see that. You can also change the language and you can set your access level. BIOS features, um, that's pretty much all of the features on the board. Um, you know, so you have your boot options and you can set your boot priority here, um, your boot logo, fast boot, all that kind of stuff. This is mostly just everything for boot. You can set your administrator password and user password here as well. And if we go over into peripherals, this is everything that you have here. Um, and one thing that's interesting about this is that you can actually go ahead and set your the LEDs that are on the board. You can set the modes that they're on um, you can, or you can turn them on or off within the BIOS. So you don't have to do it through the software. So if you want to do that, instead of the software, you can go ahead and do that if you want. You can also set up 
uh, USB storage devices, all that kind of stuff. Um, down here is also your SATA configuration. You can set that up and you actually have um, your NVMe configuration. Um, of course, the and there's nothing, we don't have an MVE drive installed, so we don't have anything here. And of course, Thunderbolt configuration if you have Thunderbolt connected as well. Um, and then a chipset, just you can turn the internal graphics on or off. Um, you can turn the audio controller on or off and you can enable or disable audio DSP. All this stuff um, you can set. Power management, um, you can set power on by keyboard, all these different power on and power off modes. And then of course you do have save and exit here um, and you can load profile, save profile. Um, you, there's also boot override. So a lot of people will look for this when they're maybe they're installing Windows or something like that. Um, you want to boot from a flash drive first and then of course on, this, on the reboot you want it to boot from your hard disk. So you have boot override which is here in the save and exit. It's usually in save and exit in most BIOSes. Um, but you have that here as well. There's also Q flash, and what that is is it allows you to go ahead and flash your BIOS. So you can just move here, and you can move the mouse around in this BIOS. I just I'm used to using the keyboard here, um, but you can do Q flash, and it will show you um, your BIOS and the BIOS version, and all of that stuff. And then you can actually update from the drive. You can save your BIOS to a drive, and then of course we're going to go ahead and exit as well. Um, if you hit F1. That just brings up your general help, which is actually over here as well. Um, F9 brings up your system information. Oops, try to close this. There we go. Um, yeah, so F9 will bring up your system information. And that is basically it. So, you know, Gigabyte has really stripped down their BIOS. Um, you know, I, I was a fan of the Tweak HD, although it, it was missing a lot of settings that you kind of had to put in there yourself. It wasn't as, I guess would say in depth as this BIOS, but also they took out their easy mode or their, um, I forget what it was called, but it was just an easy mode where you had a few settings right there when you loaded the BIOS. Um, I do like BIOSes that have that easy mode, especially for first time users who just maybe are just setting their XMP pro profile or are just setting their, um, their boot priority or something like that those people are kind of going to miss that with this BIOS. But again, this is everything that you want. You just have to kind of go into the menus and find it. But it's a good overall BIOS. Um, haven't had any issues with it yet. Uh, we easily updated the BIOS as well. Um, Gigabyte sent us a new BIOS update, used QFlash and went ahead. And uh, Flash it had no problems there. So that is basically it for this BIOS. Again, this is the BIOS you're going to see on pretty much every Z170 board from Gigabyte. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And remember guys, if you enjoy our videos, why don't you subscribe? Catch you guys later.